Hello, this is Matt from Mattini Apps, and this is part one in our brand new introduction to Swift UI series. Each video in this series will take a look at a different essential part of Swift UI. If you're not sure what Swift UI is or why you should learn it, check out my What is Swift UI video on my channel. There's a link down in the video description, and that should answer all your questions. So in this video, we will focus on one of the most fundamental parts of any app and we'll take a look at text views. So we have some coding to do, so let's get to work. So for this, I'll be using Xcode version 12, and we will start by hitting create a new Xcode project. We will select iOS, app, and hit next. We will call this something like text. Here, make sure the interface is Swift UI. The lifecycle is Swift UI app. As a quick side note, as we're using Swift UI app lifecycle, any device that will run the code that we do in this video today, it would need to be at least iOS 14. Don't worry if you don't have a device running at least at iOS 14, as you can run everything in the simulators built into Xcode and using the live previews, which we will look at in just one second. The language is set to Swift and hit next and save it up somewhere nice and safe. And we now have our brand new Swift UI project. So let's have a very quick look around this project. Straight out of the box, we have a few things set up and ready to go for us. Here we have the content view, which is a basic Swift UI view to get us up and going. The only other real thing we have in the project is this text app.swift, which will just tell our app which view to show on launch. So all this is doing at the moment is saying, okay, when the app launches, show the content view. And in this project, that's it. And to be honest with you, in Swift UI, that's all we need. If you're watching this video after making some apps using UI kits, we no longer have storyboards and we no longer have view controllers. Swift UI is what is called a declarative way of coding, which we will explore throughout this series. But for now, all we need to worry about is that for our view, this is effectively all that we need. We have this struct called content view, and that has a property called body. Within the body, we will make our view. Also in this file, we have a preview provider, and this controls the canvases and the live previews here in our app. And that is what this big old area over here on the right is. In Swift UI, we can code and see live updates of our app as we go. We haven't got to keep running our code on a device or simulator to see what's going on. It is genuinely one of the most powerful areas of Swift UI. And as an app developer, it will very quickly become your best friend. Side note, to be able to use this tool, your Mac needs to be running OS Catalina or above. If you don't have this big area here, we can turn it on here. Make sure Canvas is enabled and hit resume. And be warned, you might have to hit resume a couple of times whilst coding. The live updating of your code can sometimes pause. So if you ever see the resume button up here, or if your app just isn't updating, we can just hit resume and we're good to go. We can do some really, really cool things with these previews, but for today, we will keep it nice and simple. Let's just get up and going with Swift UI. So let's make our text view and see what we can do. So in this content view, as I said, we have a body. This body is where we create our view and we style it in the exact way that we want. Now straight out the box, we have this example text view that says, hello world. But we don't want this in our projects. We want a nice blank slate. So let's delete that and delete the padding. You'll get some errors, but that's fine. We're getting these errors because the body expects to have a view. And well, we don't have a view yet. As soon as we give it a view, these errors are going to go. So let's start making our text view. We can do this by saying, okay, give me a text view by saying text. And we can initialize this so we can create it by passing in some text that we want to show. So for this, I want my text to say, this is my Swift UI text. And as you can see straight away over in the live preview, the view has updated to show our brand new text view with the text that we want it to show. And now as fast and as easy as that, we have our first text view. So how can we style this to make it really look how we want it to look? we can use what are called modifiers. Modifiers, as you can probably guess, will take a view such as our text and it will modify it to style it in a certain way. It's worth noting now that modifiers are used to style views and not to position views in different places around the screen. SwiftUI has a whole layout system which we will check out in part three of this series. So for today, we'll keep the text view in the center of the screen. To use a modifier, all we would do is say dot and we will say what modifier we want to use. So what should we do to our text object? Well, we might want to start by making the text bigger. 
So what we can do, we can change the font size by setting a brand new font using the font modifier. Here, we can say what font we want. So for now, we will use a basic system font and we will pass in a size of say 50. Our text is now bigger. And we have now used our first modifier. If we want to select the font that we want to use rather than just using a system font, we can instead, in the font modifier, say dot custom, and we can pass in the font that we want. So I will use one that comes pre-installed on the Mac and we can again set the size. So using these modifiers, we can do a lot of things to this text to design your app in the exact way that you want. Because having that control is obviously very important. When it comes to modifiers, there's two different ways that we can set them. Either we can set a brand new modifier in our code over here on the left, which will make our preview over here on the right, update in real time, or we can do this the exact opposite way round, where we can set modifiers to our objects over here in the preview and our code will update over on the left to reflect these changes. So what we can do is we can select our text object then over here on the right, open the menu like so if needed. In the fourth tab along, we can use any of these modifiers here or hit add modifier and find a really big list. Or what you can do, you can command click on your text and hit show Swift UI inspector to get the same options here. Whilst you can do that over on the right, we'll be sticking to code in this series. I personally think if you're new to Swift UI, stick to just using code for now. I think it's really good practice and it's the best way to learn. So what other modifiers can we use? Well, we might want to set the font color. So we can use the foreground color modifier and here we can select a color. So we can either initialize this with an RGB or we can use one of the built-in colors into Swift UI, such as blue. As this is an enum and the foreground color expects a color, we can just say dot blue. We can also use modifiers to make our text bold. We can make it underlined and we can make it italic. Now, quick note when it comes to these modifiers, the normal convention is to use a brand new line for each modifier but you don't have to do this. We could do this all on one line, like so. However, that is a mess. That is incredibly hard to read. If you're looking at this view, you're gonna to have to do some work to break that down. Like sure, you can see it's a text object, but after that, this becomes very, very busy. So with the convention of a new line per modifier, it becomes incredibly easy to read. You might look at this in just a glance and say, okay, it's a text object with a font, with a color blue, it's bold, it's underlined, it's italic. Nice and quick, nice and easy. It's up to you which you use. Do it all on one line if you want, but do yourself a favor, stick to this convention and it becomes so readable, you will thank yourself later on. So hopefully you can see that these modifiers are pretty quick and pretty easy to do. But so far, we've only done some really basic things on our text. But as I said, with modifiers, we get so much control over so many different parts of this text. So let's have a look at a few more modifiers. So as you can see, by default, our text has taken up as many lines as it needs. Mine, in this case, will go across three different lines. Just to prove it will take as many lines as it needs, I'm gonna update this to say, this is my SwiftUI text, which is now blue. As you can see, it now takes four lines. Let's pop that back. But it's quite a common thing to want to be able to set the number of lines that this text can use. For that, we can use the line limit modifier. Here, we can say only ever use one line, or two lines, or three lines, or four lines, or whatever. As you can see, if we have four, our text will still only use three lines because that's all it needs. By default, this is set to nil, which will say to our text, okay, use as many lines as you need. So if you just did not have this modifier here, it will just be set to nil. But for now, let's set it to one line. And as you can see, our text becomes truncated. So we'll use this dot, dot, dot. And that's obviously expected because there's just simply not enough room for our text. We can change how our text will truncate if it runs out of room by using a truncation mode modifier. By default, this is set to tail. So the dot, dot, dot will be at the end of the line, but we have a few different options. For example, we could use head. So the dot, dot, dot will be at the start, or we can use the middle. So the dot, dot, dot is in the middle. Let's for now keep this at the default, which is tail. 
However, for today, I want to set the line limit back to nil, so our text will take as much room as it needs. As you can see, our text by default is aligned to the left. We can change this by using a modifier called multi-line text alignment. And here we have a few different options. By default, this is set to leading, which will align to the left. We can change this to dot trailing to align to the right, or we can set this to center to align in the middle. Now, really important note is that these options, as I'm sure you saw, were leading and trailing rather than left or right. That is because this modifier will work in languages which read from left to right, such as English, and from right to left, such as Arabic. If we were to use leading, for example, in English, where we read from left to right, it will align to the left. In Arabic, which can be read from right to left, this will align to the right. But for today, we want this in the center. So we're now getting more and more control over our text and we can really make it look and behave in the exact way that we want. With modifiers, we can even do some pretty powerful things that would be pretty fiddly to do if you was to use UIKit. For example, we could use a blur modifier, which will blur our text, which is a good example to show you, but that looks awful for today, so I will get rid of. We could also set a shadow by using a shadow radius. Nice and quick, nice and easy. We now have a pretty cool looking shadow. So I hope you can now see just what we can do with modifiers. Now, before we wrap up this video, one really, really important thing to know about modifiers is that the order that you use your modifiers does matter. And if you get the order wrong, your text view will look different to how you want it. And this is a really common mistake when people start using Swift UI. So let's take a look at an example and then let's take a look at exactly why the order matters. So let's give this example a little bit of room and let's add a background color to our text. So I'll use a background modifier. This can take any view, but for today we want to use a nice basic color and we will set this background to red, just like so, which does look quite horrible. So set our foreground color now back to white. That looks much better. So we now have a background, but you might look at your text and think, you know what? That is really kind of close to the edge of my view. I want to give my text a little bit of padding. Great, let's use a padding modifier where we can specify what sides of our view we want to add padding. So we could say, for example, we'll only add padding to the bottom or the top or both the left and right using the horizontal. Let's use all for now. And we can specify just how much padding we want. So let's set this to 20, a good amount of padding. Great, so we've now set our padding modifier. But this looks the exact same. Our text looks the same and our background looks the same. It looks almost as if our padding did nothing. And the really important thing to realize here is it did exactly what we told it to. But because it's in the wrong order, we're not seeing what we expect to see. So the padding has actually worked. And we can see that over here in our preview. If we select our text object, we can just click it here in our code. We can see this blue outline around our view. And our frame is bigger than our view. So the padding has worked. The problem is the background isn't now filling the entire text view. And that is because we've set the background before the padding. If we were to set the background color after the padding, it works as we expected. We now have that padding around our text. So, as I said, the order of your modifiers matter. But why do they matter? Well, every single time we add a modifier, what SwiftUI is doing under the hood is it will take our object, it will apply the modifier, and then return to us a brand new view with that modifier applied. So rather than just being one view used throughout with all of the properties being set to style it in the way that we want, we're actually getting back a new view after we've applied the font and then another new view once we've applied the color, another brand new view once we've made it bold and so on. So if we were to set the background color before the padding, at this point here, the view is a certain size and the background will fill that entire size. And after that, the background is done. It doesn't really care about any other changes that we make. We then add the padding, but that won't affect our background, which has already been set. So it looks like our background hasn't worked properly when it has. It just worked properly at the time when it was set. 
So by making sure we set the padding first and then the background, the view our background is being set to has the padding and therefore the background looks as we expect. Setting your modifiers in the correct order is one of those things that will creep up on you as you're learning Swift UI and it may cause some issues, but before you know it, you'll just set your modifiers in the right order. It's one of those things to keep in mind as you're learning Swift UI. If things aren't working properly, it's probably your ordering. But as I said, it's definitely a skill you just tend to pick up along the way as you're learning Swift UI. But it was a really important thing I felt to point out in video one of this series. So one to bear in mind in the future. So that is how we can set up a text view in Swift UI and how we can style it using modifiers to make it look the exact way that we want. And that wraps up this video. As always, leave any questions or comments down in the comments section. If you liked watching this video, which I really hope you did, make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and once again, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.